Wow. Ooh. Ooh. Big riot. Hello, welcome to this video. My name's Dan, aka Lucent. I'm a music producer and songwriter. And today I'm going to be discovering a new artist for me. I'm going to be reacting to Bjork. So let's go. Okay, so in the second of my artist discovery videos, last month I put up a poll. I included a wide array of artists, including um, Britney, Bjork, and Joni Mitchell, which is very broad. You guys were split 39% to 40% Bjork, Britney. So I did Britney first and I was like, okay, I'm, but I need to do Bjork as well because it was just so close. You know, it was actually 40% for so long and I was like, what do I do? <laughs> like 40, 40 for ages. And so I've picked a variety of songs. Some of them are from your suggestions. So thank you, Colours and Shapes. I've used a lot of your suggestions and Brandon M as well for your suggestions. So I picked those and I picked a couple more of the like top played ones because I assume they would have been the singles. That's probably a good way to discover what she's putting out to the world. And they're from across all eras. So I've got like songs from 1993, 1995, 2001, 2004, 2017, like, all the way. So I can kind of really discover her. Like my knowledge of Bjork is really limited. I've only really heard like the kind of big obvious stuff. And even then I haven't really even listened to it properly. But she's always been an artist that's intrigued me, I guess, because the kind of cultural perception of her is that she's a bit nuts. Um, and of course we all like a bit of nuts here on the channel. And um, I'm really excited to actually fully kind of actually discover this artist with you guys but yeah before we get started make sure to subscribe to the channel if you're new if you want to check out this video early and if you want to check it out uncut and with no adverts you can actually do so by signing up for the patreon there are different tiers on patreon and basically depending on which tier you support me through you get like different benefits i'm also planning to expand the patreon soon um, with another tier so yeah make sure to check it out and if it's something you fancy then uh yeah feel free that'd be lovely Thank you very much. I want to give this video a like if you like it too, because it really helps with the reach of the video. Cool, let's do it. Oh, and if there are any Bjork songs that you think I need to listen to that I haven't, then make sure to leave a comment. Depending on how well this one does, I'll do a follow-up video with like your recommendations. I'm not sure whether to do any sort of order here. I'm just gonna pick a random order, bugger it. You know, I think she'd be proud of me if I did a weird order. Okay, so let's do song number one. This is actually the most streamed song on Spotify, which I was surprised because I thought that It's So So Quiet would be number one, but it wasn't. It's this song, Army Of Me, which I've never heard of. So this is the first song, Army Of Me. Let's go. Let's go. Oh. Oh, okay. Bit of 90s grungy vibes. Okay. Stand up, you've got to manage. Ooh, okay. Huh, wow. Oh. She's got very unique vocal delivery, isn't she? Okay. It's a very dirty kind of grungy bass and drums. It's, it's rockier than I was expecting. She's quite angry in this song. Maybe she's talking about privilege. Cause she's talking about somebody complaining and them not having like a leg to stand on, I think. Wow, well, I'm leaving you. Bye. Shit. It's a very alternative melody, but it still has, it still feels quite hooky, you know? I love the kind of hiss in her voice. Me. It's kind of, yeah, microtonal almost. Those effects are quite 90s vibes, aren't they? Yeah, it's so much grungier than I was expecting. Love it, love all the sound design stuff. Yeah, okay, less musical than I was expecting. I was kind of expecting something a little bit more lush and full harmonically, you know, but very powerful, quite angry. And I, yeah, I really appreciated the music production side of it. Like a lot of the sound design choices, a lot of the kind of synthetic noises were really interesting and really cool. And yeah, and it kind of gave it a kind of grungy, kind of edgy, kind of 
pissed off attitude you know which i think kind of syncs with the lyrics let's have a look at the lyrics stand up you've got to manage i won't sympathize anymore and if you complain once more you'll meet an army of me it's kind of telling somebody to get off their ass and sort their shit out the lyrics are quite succinct which i quite like and i don't think you really necessarily hear in a lot of modern pop music you don't really hear this perspective like talking directly to somebody almost like saying you've had your last chance you need to sort your shit out like it's an ultimatum isn't it it's like you need to sort this out otherwise you're gonna meet the army of me i'm gonna attack you basically like yeah i wonder who she's talking to maybe it's like family or maybe it's a lover or it could be like a more general like it could be a statement on privilege you know you don't have a right to complain you know yeah and then she says you're on your own and we won't save you it's like is she talking about we as a population or is she talking about we as a family it's yeah interesting right okay let's go on to the next song what have we got next let's go on to venus as a boy so this is song number two. Ooh, ooh, cool i like the jauntiness and the alternate percussion is right up my street is that a bus <laughs> I'm vibing with this one already. He's Venus as a boy. Huh. I love the kind of sweeping, weird kind of sounds. It's very godlike, isn't it? Ethereal. Ooh. It's inquisitive, isn't it? Gentle. Curious. Yeah. Ooh, love that movement there. believes in a beauty oh it's the idea of femininity in masculinity you know venus as a boy you know i love that oh i love the build-up of the instruments it doesn't have kind of strict harmonic structure it's all very much kind of counterpoint stuff isn't it oh I love, oh, I just love all the little interplays of all the little bits. It's just so lovely. Oh, amazing. I think to really be like talking about gender in this way in 1993 is pretty fab. Very forward thinking, you know, very open. Oh, I love this. The strings are so wonderful. I just love how like it's very playful you know but there's a sense of like trepidation as well but it's positive isn't it it's like somebody taking a step out you know and exploring themselves yeah i love it it's like little flourishes you know oh fabulous oh my god <laughs> okay i'm convinced <laughs> that is honestly so beautifully made i just absolutely love all the different layers i feel like the approach to songwriting often is chords chords it already being already decided what the blocks of chords are going to be which is a very much kind of pop very much dance uh, genre which is fine obviously that's an approach but i love an approach to harmony that doesn't strictly regulate itself to that it uses counterpoint to like have lots of different interplay of different melodies and it builds you know the beginning it's just that kind of dun, 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 that thing i guess like a pan pipe type thing those little hits but then it just builds up it gets the bass it gets the the little piano bit in the right hand side it gets all the sweeping strings that never seem that they repeated twice you know and it really gives it such a playful energy and it really gives it such a kind of build that is very subtle and very like curious it's like painting a portrait you know every single stroke is slightly different but the overall picture once it's all put together is something that has so much emotional nuance you know yeah something wow just amazing and like you can sense the emotion in in the way that every single instrument is played i think that's something that's also missing from like a lot of modern music it's the way in which everything is a bit too quantized sometimes it's the looseness and it's the dynamic and the way that it's played is like so intrinsic to like human emotion that when you edit it too much you kind of lose a sense of that and that's something that this really holds on to you know 
Let's have a look at the lyrics. To pick a sense of humour, suggesting exciting sex. His fingers, they focus on her. He believes in beauty. He's Venus as a boy. Interesting, because it seems to be he's like having sex with Venus, this boy. I don't think it's, it's either here or there. But my interpretation of it, Venus as a boy, is almost like inhabiting a certain femininity. The female goddess of love is Venus, right? You know, she is like the bountiful example of femininity and so to kind of express this boy's venus as a boy i think for me it seems to be somebody who's testing the limits of their own gender he's not expressing himself as female yet but he's you know maybe trying on the necklace and maybe testing out the waters and being very curious and starting to open himself up to these kind of feminine aspects in his life but then like the other side of that is that on the surface telling a story of somebody who's you know having sex with venus so it's kind of very complex um lots of layers and i'd love to know what you think about the lyrics of that one particularly just love how like it's all about the feeling being inquisitive it's being curious it's being playful it's expressing openly and freely beautiful song love it oh wow i'm so impressed by that so let's skip a little forward in the timeline let's jump to 2001 whoa brandon m said that unison was his favorite bjork song and he would love for me to do it so i thought yeah okay cool i'm gonna do this <laughs> so this is song number three this is unison It's just a cappella at the moment. Oh. Mm. I love the sound design. It's so interesting. That's a weird synth in there now. It's the textures, isn't it? There's like a scraping and a then there's a sine wave sound. Oh. No, it's like a harp. Oh my god. Hello. I never thought I would compromise. A song called Unison, the hook is actually split. But they're in unison, aren't they? Two things in unison, yeah. Oh. And like in this slow build, it's getting somewhere. There's so many different sounds going on though. Let's unite tonight. Wow. Maybe it's about two people being in unison, you know, in love and in sex, maybe. I'm obsessed with the sound design, it's really cool. Maybe she's like, I always thought I would be independent, but now I've met somebody who makes me reconsider that, you know, and I'm going to compromise myself for them in a good way. I'm going <laughs> to... Compromise to be with them, you know. Oh, I love this. Like the choral build there is really unexpected but really beautiful. Mm. Oh, wow. Oh, weird. It's all like scratching, kind of foley sounds. Oh, I love all this stuff. I've been really into foley like the last year or so. Wow, I love how all these kind of weird scratchy sounds are really building into the choir and becoming part of this dynamic. It's quite powerful. Wow. Oh. That's what I've been waiting for the whole song. Oh. Wow. Oh my god, all, my, all the hairs on my arms are standing up. Wow, incredible. Unison. Oh, wow. <laughs> I love all the glitchy sounds, it's like really cool. Mm. Wow, oh my god. That was f just a masterful, like, a demonstration of dynamics, wasn't it? The first kind of two repeats of this build that, that she kind of creates slowly and layers up in a very interesting fashion. But like, it, it, 
the first two repeats kind of don't quite satisfy. And I kind of thought at the beginning, like, I felt like I wasn't satisfied with those first two builds. But then when she then kind of like took it back to the glitchy stuff and then started building it up again, it just all came together, went up that extra level and just blew me away. It was just absolutely had, she had me in the palm of her hand and she was like, I'm not letting go of you, <laughs> like until right, right at the end and I'm going to blow your socks off. Ah, amazing. Just so fabulous. And I absolutely adore the sound design in it. I love how she really plays with those kind of textural glitchy stuff, really high frequency kind of moments that really cut through the big full legato sounds like the choir and like the strings and the bass and everything it really does kind of give like a completely completely unique soundscape amazing let's have a look at the lyrics because born stubborn me will always be before you count one two three i will have grown my own pro private branch of this tree you gardener you discipliner domestically i can obey all your rules and still be let's unite tonight we shouldn't fight embrace you tight let's unite tonight so she's talking about her like looking at herself maybe in the frame of this new relationship she's looking back at who she thought she was and kind of saying you know i'm i always thought i was stubborn I always thought that I was, uh, you know, uncompromising, that I was my own person. But suddenly now I'm kind of in this new space and I'm wanting to unite with you. I'm wanting to find this unison, be it physical, emotional, mental unison. Let's find this together. It's yeah, really inspiring. So nuanced. I love the little moment I will have grown my own private branch of this tree. And the next kind of section describes her partner as the gardener. It's like leading on this metaphor. Like she's starting a new phrase, starting, starting a new point, you know, lyrically. But it's continued the metaphor on. So it kind of gives this flow and connection to the lyric. Really, really, really cool. And I really like how the, how the two voices on either side panned left and right or almost like two voices almost fighting but then they kind of it all kind of unites in the middle with the main kind of chorus moment um is really clever fabulous love it oh my god she's a real artist you can really tell that every single element of the song is carefully decided and thought about to really create a a feeling something that's very complex but everything's working together unless it's not supposed to be working together you know it's all thought about yeah very very good okay let's go to the next song okay let's stick with 2001 for now another suggestion for me was a song called pagan poetry this, i think it's from the same album as this so let's do that Ooh, i like the harmony here It sounds kind of dark and mystical, doesn't it, already? Mm. This one, like, musically, harmonically, really love where it's at. Wow. It's like she's being almost, almost like, cursed. That's, just, that's the energy I'm getting, you know? Take that bass away. Yeah. Ooh. Like there's like booping. It's almost like Morse code or something. Oh, it is. I just saw the lyrics. Morse code signals. Yeah. <laughs> seems lost, maybe a bit broken by something. I love him, I love him, I love him, him. Chills. I love him, I love him. Wow, really, to take it back to that, completely dry, incredibly brave production choice. And now the voice in the background are like, oh, she loves him. It's, it feels like a curse, this love is like a curse, you know? <laughs> Oh, amazing. So cool. That was so dark. I loved that. And I loved how 
it like built up a kind of repetition, a certain repetition throughout the song and then decided, nope, I'm taking that all away to just kind of transition into a new part of the song that is completely dry. Oh my God, how cool to just like have a real lush production with really cool sound design and then just be like, I'm going to focus into, onto this lyric, I love him with absolutely nothing, no even no reverb, just just her voice, bare, vulnerable. And it's like so dramatic in that sense, isn't it? Because it's like when everything's stripped away, this is the centre of what I feel. And it's not a happy feeling, is it? It's dark. It's amazing, isn't it? Isn't that just so incredible? And like so, so brave, like to really take it all away like that. It's just so, so inspiring. You're, you're gonna like witness the, my songs over the next couple of years and it's gonna be really obvious which ones are like inspired by certain moments. I'm like, hmm, maybe I could take all the reverb off of this vocal part. <laughs> Let's have a look at the lyrics. Um, Peddling through the dark currents, I find an accurate copy, a blueprint of the pleasure in me. A handshake, crooked five fingers, they fall a pat form a pattern yet to be matched on the surface simplicity. There's kind of witchiness to it, isn't there? Like forming a pattern with your fingers, like shape, iconography. There's, you know, secret codes, Morse code, literally. The darkest pit in me is pagan poetry. Oof, I wonder what that means. Sounds like she's met somebody who's probably really bad for her. And he's pushing all her buttons. I feel like that's maybe what the, what the Morse code is kind of signifying. It's like you know, the more modern term maybe of have, you know, they're pushing on my buttons. They're making me act a certain way. I can't control myself around him, you know. It's almost like, like a dark secret feeling awoken in her by this person. It's like a foreshadowing, isn't it? It's not like specifically like this person is a bad person and I love him. It's like that emotion is brought through from the music, you know. Um, not necessarily through the lyric. It's very nuanced. I, yeah, really just so fucking cool. So impressed, actually. My God, I can't believe I haven't actually discovered Bjork until now. Like, it feels kind of, like, terrible, really, doesn't it? Okay, let's go to the next song. So we're going to jump forward to 2004. This song is Oceania. Let's go. One breath away. Ooh. Reminds me of you, uh, Lord, vocally. I can't figure out what's going on with the sounds. Oh, it's beatboxing. Ha, very cool. Wow. Ooh. It's like people watching a show or something, isn't it? Wow. Oh, amazing. <laughs> this is so bonkers. It's like people on a roller coaster, isn't it? <laughs> My housemates are going to be like, what the f is he doing? <laughs> Ooh, it's weird. Wet is salty. I have no idea what the lyrics are, apart from that. The sound design is just fucking incredible. Just in terms of the textures and the referencing, it's kind of so out there, but so fucking cool to listen to. Ooh, chords. <laughs> Cool. Oh my god, that was so fun. It's just absolutely phenomenal. Like, I can't even... It's blowing my mind. <laughs> I feel like, as a producer, as a songwriter, I've been missing out on a whole section of creativity. My listening in the past has never been that experimental. And until I started doing this channel, I kind of was a little bit conservative with what I listened to. I was mostly exposed to what my parents were into, um, and they were into like a lot of kind of theatrical stuff, a lot of like, you know, like Meatloaf and Queen and uh, Michael Jackson and stuff like that, you know, that's 
and definitely a lot more poppy so stuff like this never really ever kind of came near me and but now like with spotify and stuff i can actually explore this music without having to actually you know buy it buy a full album you know and actually through all these recommendations to his channel like it's really like opening my kind of listening up like at, like it's incredible it's really great for me like i love it i feel like every new artist that i discover i'm like developing my own songwriting and this here with like stuff like this to is just so incredibly inspiring for me to listen to this kind of guttural beatboxing style layered up with these vocal harmonies that are like people on a roller coaster or people watching a show or do you know what I mean? like the reference is very specific and you kind of get it emotionally immediately don't you the kind of feeling that those people are like, Whoa! who thinks to make something like that it's just like visionary and it's blowing my mind if i'm completely honest like <laughs> Like, completely. Let's have a quick look at the lyrics. One breath away from Mother Oceania. Oceania? Oceana. Your nimble feet make prints in my sands. You've done good for yourself since you left my wet embrace and crawled ashore. Every boy is a snake, is a lily. Every pearl is a lynx, is a girl. I like the lyrics. I don't really understand what they're talking about. They're kind of like God. Like, maybe, like, worship. There's a lot of nature. Your sweat is salty, I am why. Maybe she's taking the role of the goddess very strange anyway yeah let me know what your interpretation of those lyrics are let's go on to the next song what year are we transporting ourselves to now let's go to 2011 now this one was one of i think one of the singles um and i wanted one from a little bit of a kind of mid era so we've gone i think it's crystalline crystalline i don't know how i say that anyway song number six. Ooh. toy like Ooh. I don't know what that sound is. Weird. Ooh. Wow. I love that snare. It's very thin, very sharp. Very cool. Kind of hyper pop those drums, eh? <laughs> Ooh. Cool. I love the filter sweep. Sounds like waves. She loves twinkly noises and long swooshing stuff. That's like a real kind of thing is having the legato and the staccato elements mixed together, you know. Something in the way that the drums are produced, they're very sharply cut and very dry, is really giving me hyper pop vibes. Maybe hyperpop is giving me Bjork vibes. <laughs> Spread out like my fingers. Very strange song, this one. Crystalline. I honestly have no idea what this one's about. <laughs> Ooh. Chasing status? <laughs> I was not expecting this. Shit, it's like overwhelming the production. Okay, let's just go for it. <laughs> ah. I mean, this is the era, isn't it? 2011. Can the camera keep up? <laughs> oh my god. I was not expecting a fucking. What? Well, I guess it's a uh, trance. Uh, Whatever that genre of music is, drum and bass, whatever it is, one of those. Um, <laughs> I was not expecting that drop at the end. That's so, so bonkers. That was a weird one. I feel like that that one is definitely the most experimental in terms of its structure and stuff. I kind of got the feeling that I was supposed to feel slightly uncomfortable. Um, yeah, I don't know, it didn't take me on as much of an emotional journey as some of the other ones, you know. No less, uh, valid, you know, because there is so much cool kind of experimentation then there. And, like, the last bit just is, like, blows my mind. Underneath our feet, crystals grow, grow like plants. I'm blinded by the light. She seems to be talking about, like, almost like, like a fantasy alien world within herself. I demand the light. We mimic the openness of the warmth we love. Maybe it's about reaching, like, self-love and self-acceptance and kind of describing it as this like weird morphing living crystal thing within ourselves um i think 
<laughs> I mean, who knows? Like, that is really out there. <laughs> like, honestly, when I heard, heard Army of Me, I was, like, kind of a bit, like, a little bit disappointed because I would kind of had a certain expectation of experimental, experimental but I've very much been satisfied <laughs> cool okay let's go on to the penultimate song we're jumping all the way into 2017 so we've like really like come through decades of artistry now and this is the song Blissing Me Crystalline Ooh. a little bit more intimate here love this harp She does talk about love quite a lot, doesn't she? Wow. This was much more slower energy. Ooh. Again, with the mismatching the legato and the staccato, you know, she really plays with that a lot. Hmm. This one's about music itself, maybe? Ooh. <laughs> that energy. <laughs> it's really cinematic though, isn't it? There's a real mixture of classical instrumentation and then really weird sound design. These drums here are reminding me of like Arca. Ooh. Tempo change. Oh, this one's got Arca in it. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't even see this one's feet Arca. <laughs> I nailed it, I'm just saying. <laughs> oh my God, that's so funny. <laughs> yeah, I love that this mixture between the, the harp and the experimental drums and stuff. dark ending there. <laughs> what was going on at the end there? That's very weird. That was, um, that was, um, <laughs> that one like had a lot less structure to it again, didn't it? Very open-ended. But yeah, I really appreciated the, again, the mixture of the, mixture of classical, you know, the harp, harp, harp. <laughs> harp has such like a specific emotion and energy attached to it so to utilize that and really upend it with this kind of really experimental dark gritty drum production from Arca presumably <laughs> is really interesting to hear something I haven't really heard like maybe you could say Florence and the Machine's first album does a lot of that it does but this is in a way that is is even more experimental you know even more open-ended it's uh, really taking sounds and really moving in them and into places that you wouldn't expect. Yeah, and utilising the audience's emotional connection to those sounds in order to ultimately, like, upend those expectations. What do you expect when you think of a harp? Angelic, you think romance, you think classical music, you think, you know, those sorts of things. But you, what you don't think is experimental, strange song <laughs> with unintelligible lyrics, with... Other, with loads of weird sound design and drums and grittiness going on and she really yeah it's like taking that emotion and making the listener it's forcing the listener to kind of open their ears and open their minds you know it's really clever really intentional two music nerds obsessing he reminds me of the love in me i'm celebrating on a vibrancy sending each other mp3s falling in love to a song so it's about falling in love over music but she's she's a little bit um a little bit worried about why maybe she's falling this way. Oh, robbing him of his youth, they're young. So she's got like a moral quandary, maybe meeting with somebody who is young. And then she's asking herself the question at the end, did I just fall in love with love instead of him? Very nuanced, complex interpretation of a kind of new relationship with a certain age gap as well. There's a lot of kind of detail there, which is really cool. Very impressive, love it. Okay, before we go into the final song, if you're liking the video, then make sure to subscribe. Go do it. I'm liking all this experimental music I've been doing on the channel recently. Um, so make sure to leave a comment if there's any, if you have any more 
Bjork recommendations or just any other experimental music recommendations that you'd like me to react to. And make sure to check out the Patreon as well if you really want to support me in another way um, and get to watch vid videos early. Cool. Okay, let's go on to the final song. I've saved this one because we all know this one. It's oh so quiet. Shh. Which, you know, is the one song that everybody knows. Um, but I've never actually sat down and listened to it properly, you know? So I thought... Let's do it in this reaction. Let's do it as a big finale. So let's go. This is also it's as a quiet. It's a classic. This isn't it. She sings so quietly as well. Elsa still peaceful until. It's so good, isn't it? <laughs> I just love the kind of jazz, like, wowness of it. It's a bit negative, isn't it? It's a cycle. And it's nice and quiet. <sighs> Big riot. It's so good. <laughs> wow. It's cynical, isn't it, actually? Even though it's really joyous. She loves to play around with classical music, doesn't she? Well, not necessarily classical, like big band, you know, but she takes it somewhere really different and quirky and weird. You the spell. Oh, it has a happy ending. There's no mistake. <laughs> That's another big riot. Oh yeah. There's just something so satisfying about that that transition. It's so good. <laughs> Ooh, middle eight. I don't think I've heard the middle eight before. <laughs> oh, that is such a good song. It really is so different from everything else though, isn't it? Like, to really see her take something that just is a classic. It's one of those covers that is just so iconic because she really just makes it completely her own and is now the standard version. Like, there are so many other musicians, like, you know, like Elvis, who, like, covered songs and just it, they just kind of became theirs, you know? And it's so different, but, like, she really lends her, like, quirky energy to it. I love it. What a great discovery. Honestly, like, it just felt like such a kind of masterclass in creating a feeling, you know? Every song had a central feeling that was not necessarily wrote in the lyrics. It was more like a general building of sounds towards a greater whole. And I think that, like, she proves that you can take really disparate elements and really strange sounds and create such nuanced emotional journeys within songs and by really playing with like dynamics uh with texture with you know this mixture of legato like classical sounds and modern sounds interesting crazy weird sampling and creating yeah something that is so nuanced and complex it doesn't reduce itself it doesn't stop it it doesn't think oh no i need to strip it back it's too weird she just feels and just puts it out there as it is, unfiltered and unfettered, you know. And for me, yeah, as a songwriter, as a musician, as a producer, I just find it so inspiring to, to see somebody just really connect to an emotion and just elicit it in a song with such precision and such intention. And like in such a way that is just so inspiring because I have never heard anything like it and yet it still makes me feel a specific way. You know? Yeah. Which is just a, a phenomenal. Amazing. I will be exploring more of Bjork's music, even if I don't do it in a reaction. But if you do, if you have any songs that I have to listen to that will give me more of a, more of a vibe of what Bjork is, please leave them in the comments. And if this video does well, I'll do a uh, like follow-up reacting to your Bjork recommendations at some point. Well, thank you so much for tuning into this video. Make sure to like and subscribe and all that biz. Well, I think it's Florence next week, the week after whenever this goes out, even. Because I'm filming these in advance. 
which is crazy. Thank you so much to my Weeping Wendy patrons. Their names are appearing on screen now. Those are the guys who support me via the second tier of my Patreon. Thank you so much for all your support. You are contributing to my career as a creative person on this in this crazy world. So thank you so much. And yeah, I will see you next week for another video. Cool. Bye. I'm falling in love